Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to take a look at something more modern than usually. But, well, dead hardware is dead hardware, right? To be precise, this Lenovo T480S is not completely dead, but it has a very annoying issue. I never made a video about this device, but I got it some time ago for free. It should have been thrown away, but I decided to try to fix it. The list of issues was quite long. First of all, there were stripes on the display, which magically disappeared as soon as I removed the bottom cover of the notebook. It turned out that there was a bad connection to the memory slot, and after reflowing the solder joints, the stripes were gone. The second issue was that the BIOS was locked with a password, which the previous owner didn't know anymore. I managed to reset the BIOS password by reading the BIOS chip and patching it. I will not go into details about it in this video, but if you are interested in how to do it, I'll put a link in the description. After those more complicated issues were fixed, there was another one. This notebook was given to me without a keyboard, so I had to use an external USB connected keyboard to test it. Luckily, I was able to buy a replacement and this notebook would be finally usable. Or would it? There was still one thing which appeared strange to me, despite the fact that I used the original 65 watts Lenovo power supply. The notebook reported on power on that the power supply was too weak and I should use an original power supply. Well, first I ignored it and installed Linux, but suddenly middle in the operation the system reported low battery, despite that the power supply was connected all the time. It looked like the battery was not charging at all, so I used my USB-C power meter to measure the power consumption and was surprised to see that the power consumption of the notebook was only 15 watts and the voltage was only 5 volts instead of 20. This is definitely not normal and obviously the battery was discharging faster than the power supply could charge it. And this is where the fun begins. I started to investigate the issue and was poking around with my multimeter on the mainboard, but I couldn't find anything. After some research, I stumbled upon a forum post which mentioned that Lenovo has released a firmware update which has slowly killed many notebooks. The list is very long and T480S was one of the affected models. It took Lenovo some time to acknowledge the issue and they released a firmware update which should fix it, if things would be so easy. As I already mentioned, one effect of the issue was that the notebook doesn't charge with full power and reports on power on that the power supply is too weak. As you see, Lenovo reported this as a critical Thunderbolt firmware issue. On T480S and many other Lenovo models, the Thunderbolt controller is responsible for the USB-C power delivery. So, if the firmware of the Thunderbolt controller is broken, among other things, the notebook will only charge with 5 volts instead of 20. So Lenovo released a firmware update which should fix the issue and all what theoretically needs to be done is to download the update and execute it. But there is a catch. On many devices the update fails with an error message that a Thunderbolt controller is not present. I checked my T480S and the firmware manager reported that everything is up to date, but the Thunderbolt controller is not present in the list of available devices. Let's see if I can fix it without soldering. First, always disconnect the main battery before working on a notebook's internals. This is very important because otherwise you could accidentally damage the components. This is the 8 megabits flash chip where the firmware is stored. On the T480S it is located near the Thunderbolt port and the Wi-Fi card. The chip is soldered to the mainboard, but luckily I have a T48 programmer which allows to read and write the chip without desoldering it. For that purpose I will use such a clamp which can be set over the chip. The other end has some open pins which have to be inserted into the programmer. From the programmer point of view it looks like I would insert the chip directly into it. 
By the way, it is not important which programmer to use. I have this T48, which is very versatile, but you can also use cheaper programmers like CH341A or even Raspberry Pi. Now let's read the chip completely and save the dump into a file. As I said, the chip model is Winbond W25Q80DV, which is an 8 megabit flash chip. The dump shall be saved into t480s-1.bin file. As you see, the chip ID was detected correctly, that means that the clamp is connected properly. But a bad contact can always happen, so it is a good idea to read the chip multiple times to verify that the data is always the same. I will read it three times and compare the results afterwards. So, now we have three dumps of the chip. Let's compare the MD5 checksums of the content. Oops! As you see, the checksums are all different, which means that the data is not the same. This can happen if the clamp is not connected properly, but in our case the reason is… well, Lenovo messed it up. I could try to readjust the clamp and read the chip over and over again, but the checksums would be still different all the time. Following couple of steps are not needed to fix the issue, but I would like to explain what is actually going on here. It is hard to compare binary files with each other, so let's convert them into textual hex formats and compare those text files instead. So, here you see all three files side by side. Interestingly, the difference appears to be only in the beginning of the files. In this case, the last address line of the difference block uh, starts at 3FF90, which corresponds to about 262,064 bytes. And this block changes all the time whenever I try to read the chip. After that block, the files are identical. So, what happens in that block? The Thunderbolt firmware is reported to be stored in the first 260 kilobytes of the chip. The bug which Lenovo introduced with the firmware update was that the system started uncontrolled to write data into the flash chip over and over again. Unfortunately, such flash chips have a limited number of write cycles, and if you keep writing into it, it will eventually wear out and become unusable. This is exactly what happened to this device and so many other Lenovo devices out there. As I mentioned earlier, Lenovo refused to acknowledge this issue for quite a while and all that time, all the devices which installed the faulty firmware were slowly dying. It was important to fix this as soon as possible, but the time was running out and the fixed firmware was eventually released too late for so many devices. All the notebooks where the flash chip was already worn out by the time Lenovo released the fixed firmware, they didn't report the Thunderbolt controller anymore and so they couldn't be updated. For many notebooks this would mean a mainboard replacement, but not today and not for this device. As I already mentioned, Lenovo released a fixed firmware and you can download it from their website. Unfortunately, this is a Windows executable which will not work on my T480S anyway, because the Thunderbolt controller is not reported anymore. Furthermore, I use Linux, so where can we get the firmware from? I could try to extract the binary from the Windows executable, but there is a better way. Say hello to the Linux Vendor Firmware Service portal, which allows hardware vendors to upload firmware updates. This is a great project which is used today by the most Linux distributions to install firmware updates. Now, if I search for the T480S, I can find the firmware update which is called Thunderbolt Controller Updates in version 20. This is what we need. As you see, it mentions that it fixes the Thunderbolt SPI ROM wearout issue. Let's download it. Back in our directory with the firmware dumps, here you see the Windows executable with the firmware update, which we can ignore. The interesting file is this uh, long named cap archive. Let's extract it with 7-zip into a temp folder. The files are extracted. And the interesting file is this firmware.bin, which is 
258 kilobytes in size. If you remember, this is roughly the size of the corrupt block in the chip dumps we made previously. Now we have to reassemble a fixed firmware by replacing the corrupt block with the content of the firmware.bin file. First, let's use the t480s underscore one dot bin as a base file and copy it into t480s underscore fixed dot bin. Now I use dd to override the first corrupt 262,064 bytes with zeros. By the way, the conf equal no trunk option is important here because otherwise dd would override the whole file with zeros, which is not what we want. Let's convert the fixed bin into a textual hex file to see the changes to the dump we uh, read initially. As you see, the corrupt block is now completely filled with zeros. Nice. Now we can use dd again to copy the content of the firmware bin file into the fixed binary. Once again, notice the conf equal no trunk option here. Time to refresh the chip with the fixed firmware. The clamp is connected. Let's see. I'll use mini pro to write the fixed firmware. And unfortunately, the write operation failed with a validation error. The content of the chip is not identical to the content of the file. Let's try once again. Nope, same problem. I'm afraid the flash chip has to be replaced. That's a pity, I was hoping to fix it without soldering. But that is not the end of the world. Let's see if I can find a replacement chip in my scrap. So, unfortunately I don't have a Winbond W25Q80 chip, which is 8 megabits in size. But I have found a Winbond W25Q128, which is 128 megabits. As far as I see, otherwise the chips should be identical. Though I don't know if 128 megabits chip will work as a replacement, but before I order a new one, I'll give it a try. Let's try once again. Yeah, the size doesn't match, I know. Please ignore. Nice, verification passed. Let's solder it onto the mainboard and see if it works. The placement of the chip is not ideal for soldering. It's very narrow and close to the slot for the Wi-Fi card. Luckily, I have some captain tape. And the soldering is done. Let's connect the main battery and use the USB-C power meter to see how much power it consumes now. And would you look at that, the voltage climbs up to 20 volts. Awesome! Let's connect the notebook to a capture device and see if it works at all. Oh, the Thunderbolt controller configuration message, that is a good sign. Once on the desktop, let's check the list of devices visible to the firmware manager. And here it is, the Thunderbolt controller is now present in the list of devices. I would say the fix was successful. So, it turned out that Lenovo killed this notebook with a firmware update. But luckily, you can fix it without a mainboard replacement. However, unfortunately for this chip, every help was too late. Having a bigger size flash chip worked so far, and maybe it will provide even more benefits in the future. Keyword Koboot? Well, that is maybe something for another day. I hope this video was interesting and maybe will help some of you to fix your T480S or any other Lenovo notebook with the same issue. And so far, this is it for today. Thank you for watching and goodbye.